Welcome to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this is a short weekly summary of interesting news that is relevant for my Distributed Systems and Blockchain lecture here at the Eastern University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. So the big news in the crypto world is Donald Trump. Bitcoin has reached almost 80,000 US dollar following Trump's victory in the United States presidential election. And if we are taking a look at the coin market cap, we are almost at 80,000. That is an all time high. And of course, the media is covering this event. Here we see almost 80,000. So that's a new high. And BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF saw daily inflows of 1 billion US dollar. And the other cryptocurrencies are doing also well. One group, for example, of the challenge task is working with Sui and this surged almost to 3 US dollar. And currently it's at already 310. So I checked half an hour ago. So currently it's going upward. So everything's green. That's looking actually great. Trump positioned himself as crypto friendly as he supports to create a US national Bitcoin reserve, which means that the US would be investing in Bitcoin as part of its reserve and this was again confirmed here in this article and he also launched the VLFI token and I think this is a huge statement a world leader created and sold or still selling his own ERC20 token I don't see how this project will be successful as you only bought voting rights but I have not seen any other world leader with his own ERC20 token before Trump also supports the US Bitcoin mining. He wants crypto to be mined, minted, and made in the USA. And another point he made is the SEC reform, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Trump promised to fire SEC Commissioner Gary Gensler to create a more industry friendly regulatory environment. And uh, currently the market is overly optimistic again with headlines like Bitcoin boom on the Trump could push crypto to 10 trillion market cap with Bitcoin spiking to $200,000 in this article here. Standard Chartered Bank is painting an incredible optimistic picture for the future of digital assets. The British banking giant predicts the crypto market will quadruple in value over the next two years, with Bitcoin potentially reaching 200,000 US dollars per coin and Ethereum surpassing 10,000. Interestingly, their view on Bitcoin as US national BTC reserve they see this possibility as relatively low. I think this is interesting. And also interesting is the prediction of the Bitcoin dominance. They predict in 2026 a reduction of the Bitcoin dominance from 60% to 40%. And currently it's at the Bitcoin dominance here at 57.7%. This is this number. The Bitcoin dominance refers to Bitcoin's market capitalization as a percentage of the total cryptocurrency market capitalization and with a 57% dominance indicating that Bitcoin represents 57 of the entire crypto market's value. And uh, this metric is widely used to see how influential Bitcoin is. So let's see how long the green wave lasts until the next crypto winter. The next article is about a new stable coin from crypto giant Robin Hood and Kraken. It's the following article here. And they have teamed up with several other major financial players to create the global dollar network and 
at the heart of this initiative is a new stablecoin called USDG. There is lots of money involved in stablecoins and what sets this stablecoin apart is its unique structure, um, the reward structure. So the participants who help drive adoption will share income generated from the coins reserve. Well, let's see how they can compete against giants as Tether, USDT or Coinbase's USDC or new players like BlackRock. The next article is about prediction markets. It's the following article here. Here, participants can bet on future outcomes. And we talked about this in the lecture. A polymarket is one of the bigger one or the biggest one. It's a blockchain-based prediction market platform where users can bet on various outcomes, including political elections. And it works like this. Each contract pays one US dollar if the prediction is correct. If the prediction is wrong, the contract pays zero dollar. And for the 2024 election has brought the prediction market into the spotlight like never before. Polymarket, uh, which as I mentioned is a cryptocurrency based betting platform, has emerged as a major player in election forecasting with users betting billions on various electoral outcomes. And as of uh, election day, bettors have placed 1.5 3 billion US dollars on Donald Trump and 827 million US dollars on Kamala Harris, meaning that the ones who were betting 827 million US dollars lost those uh, bet and uh, the ones who were betting on Donald Trump, they won this, this money. The platform even allowed users to bet on specific events, such as whether Taylor Swift would attend Harry's recent rally. However, experts caution that betting markets aren't perfect predictors. Late October saw Trump's odds surge due to just 1% of polymarkets users, showing how these markets can be swayed by concentrated betting activity. So it may not be the best instrument to predict elections. The next article is a fascinating insight into modern software development as Ente, which is a privacy-focused photo collection company. It's the following article here. They share their nine-month journey of switching uh, to a mono repo, a single place to store all their code. So nine months ago, Ente made a significant change in how they organize their software code. Instead, uh, multiple locations, they moved everything into one central repository. And uh, this is called the monorepo. We are also talking about monorepos in the distributed systems lecture. And the results have been surprisingly positive for them. In this article, they mentioned that the biggest win has been less grunt work, for example, when they needed to update their face recognition technology, they could make changes across their mobile app, desktop app and web app all in one go, instead of creating separate updates for each platform. And the switch has also brought their team closer together. Developers now have a better sense of what their colleagues are working on simply by seeing all the activity in one place. It's like having everyone working in the same digital office rather than separate buildings. And another unexpected benefit, the company's GitHub stars, a measure of popularity in the coding world, are now consolidated in one place instead of being spread across different repositories, giving their work more visibility. As mentioned in my distributed systems lecture, there are pros and cons of monoleports and polyreports, 
And with a monorepo, single components or libraries are more difficult. It's not impossible, but it's more difficult to share outside this project. The next article is about Kubernetes. Um, it's the following article here. Gitpod has announced a significant change in direction moving away from Kubernetes. Gitpod, which serves over 1.5 million users with cloud-based development environments, has decided to abandon Kubernetes after discovering it wasn't the right fit for their needs. The company's journey reveals why development environments are uniquely challenging to manage. According to Gitpod, development environments are different from typical production workloads in several key ways. They require constant interaction, can't easily be moved between servers and need unpredictable amount of computing power. Plus, developers absolutely can't afford to lose their work, making system reliability quite crucial. And the article mentions several storage related risks, such as issues with persistent volume claims, that could cause workspace failures. And the company tried various solutions over the years, including experimenting with different storage systems, security measures, and even exploring micro VMs. And despite these efforts, they found that forcing development environments to work with Kubernetes was creating more problems than it solved. And as a result, Gitpod has launched a new system called Gitpod Flex, designed specifically for development environments. And the new platform promises faster setup times, better security and simpler operation, all without the complexity of Kubernetes. I have not tested it yet, but if they claim it's not as complex as Kubernetes, I will for sure definitely take a look at it. The last article is a remarkable case of technology optimization. It's the following article here. Recall.ai discovered that seemingly simple choice in their video processing system was costing them an extra million dollar annually in AWS cloud cost. Here's how they found out and fixed this expensive technical oversight. So recall that AI, they provide automated meeting bot services, including transcript from video. So they need to process lots of videos. And at first glance, um, it might seem hard to believe that using WebSockets, a uh, common web technology could lead to such significant costs. But for recall AI, company that process millions of videos, meetings every month, this technical detail made all the difference. So the story begins with their meeting bot service, which captures and processes video meetings for hundreds of companies. Each bot required four CPU cores to run smoothly, a requirement that was driven up their cloud computing costs significantly. And when the team investigated where all this processing power was going, they made a surprising discovery. Instead of video processing being the main CPU drain as expected, most of their processing power was being consumed by simply moving data from one part of their system to another using WebSockets. And the problem became clear when they looked at the numbers. A uh, single 1080p video streamed at 30 frames per second generates around 93 megabytes of data every second, and their busiest bots were handling around 150 megabytes per second. And this massive amount of data was being unnecessarily fragmented and masked by the WebSocket protocol, creating significant overhead. Think of it like um, having to break down a large packet into smaller pieces, wrap each piece individually, and then unwrap and reassemble them on the other end, even though you're just moving them from one room to the other in the same building. 
So what's the solution? The team developed a system using shared memory, which essentially allows different parts of their program to access the same data without copying it back and forth. It's like giving multiple people access to read the same book instead of making copies for each person. And the results, they were dramatic. This optimization, along with a few other improvements, cut their CPU usage in half and saved them over a million US dollars per year in cloud computing cost. So that's it for this week. Um, let's see if the Bitcoin green wave and the cryptocurrency green wave continues, if the Bitcoin goes up to 100K or next week we are down at 60K.